Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on maximum length of a concatenated string with unique characters. And in the problem you're given an array of strings r and a string is formed by the concatenation of a subsequence of r that has unique characters. Return the maximum possible length s. So subsequence is an array that can be derived from another array by deleting some or no elements without changing the order of the remaining elements. And so in this first example, we have these three things, so un, iq, and ue, and they show you all the valid concatenations. There's either nothing, or un, or iq, or ue, or you can combine some, but you can't combine these two because they share a u. So you have to have a string without repeating characters. So you can combine un and iq, or you can combine iq and ue. And either one of those is four, so the maximum is four. In the second example, if they show you kind of what the best thing is, so you can combine CHA with ERS. You can't combine CHA with ACT because they share the A. And if you combine CHA with ERS, you can't use this R as well because there's already an R. So the longest thing is CHA plus ERS, which will be ACTORS. Or it, sorry, it'll be uh, cha CHAIRS. Or you could do the other way where you can combine ACT and ERS. Either one of those is valid, and both of those would give you six characters. Finally, in the third one, you basically have a string of all 26 characters, and there's only one string, so you just want to return that one string. So essentially, our problem is basically asking, given a bunch of words, make the longest word possible using some combination of words and characters can't be repeated. So it's kind of simple what they want. And also there are only 16 words and each word is 26 or less characters. So like, how do we figure out if we can combine things, right? That part's pretty easy. Like if we say like, okay, our current word is CHA and we have ACT. How do we figure out if we can combine those? So one thing you can do for your word is just store a set of characters. So for example, for CHA, you will have CHA. And then for every word you find, get a set of those characters, so ACT. And then you can just do a union of the characters and there should be nothing, right? So you just ask like what, char what characters are in both. And if there is a character that's in both, then these can't be combined. So that's one thing you can do. But there's kind of like a better way to do this. Ideally, what we want to do is we want to be able to compare two words and know if they can be combined. But we don't all, we don't only just want to compare these words. We want to compare any two words that we can make. So for example, if we have CHA that we already combined with ACT, or we couldn't combine it with ACT, but let's say we combine it with ERS, and then we try to combine it with ACT, we want to be able to compare these two in O of 1, because that'll speed it up a bit. Now, it'll still pass without this, but that's kind of like a, a better way to do this. So how do you, how would you do that? And definitely would encourage you to maybe like pause and think about it. Given two words where a word will only have the characters A through Z, and they will be unique, right? So maximum 26 characters, A through Z. How do I compare these two words in O of 1? And by O of 1, I don't mean like compare character by character and, and the words are short so it'll be of one i mean in literally like one um like one operation and so the way to do that is a bit mask so technically this will actually it will still actually compare the characters but it will be um like easier to store instead of having these sets right because when you compare two bit masks you still do compare bit by bit so you will still compare 26 characters but um, it'll be more efficient than having sets, like turning everything into a set and comparing sets and all that. So yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a bit mask for the word. So basically, and, and this is gonna let us like pre-compute stuff and easily change our word. Alternatively, like I said, you can use sets. So you can just have like a set of your current word and a set of the word you're looking for and do a union of those sets. So the bit mask is gonna be really easy. Um, basically, we're just gonna give because we only have 26 characters, we're, we're going to start with 26 zeros. And then the index in the bit mask for the character will be, is that character on or not? 
So what we are going to do is first, we're gonna take all of our words and we're gonna change them into bit masks. So we'll have an array of bit masks here. And then for our current mask, like let's say we have some word of some characters that we represent in a mask, so it's like this. And we try to add another word. So let's say this ACT is a bit mask like this. Obviously this is not exactly what it is, but to compare two masks to see if they have anything in common is very easy. You just do an and. And if any, if any bit is on for both of them, that means there's a character in common. So this and would give you a non-zero number. So in this case, this character is, um, is the same. So that means it's present in both of those. So this would allow us to do that in O of one. Like I said, it's not technically O of one, it's gonna be like logarithmic. So honestly thinking about it, the set might be like roughly the same, but a bit mask is gonna be actually easier to code once we make the mask. Because then we don't have to like add and remove from a set. We'll just have a mask that's just an integer. So that part will actually save us a little bit of space as well, because we're just gonna be storing a bit mask, which is just an, an, an integer. So now as far as how to make the bit mask, so that's pretty easy. Basically the index that's gonna be a zero one will just be the character we're at starting from the right. So this first character will be A, B, C, D, E, all the way down to Z. So this is like the zero bit, the one bit, two, three, four, and so on. And the way it's gonna work is also gonna be really easy. So let's say we wanna turn CHA into a bit mask all we really need to know is the index of the bit to turn on, right? So we know the index of the character we want to turn on. So A will be zero. So we can just say like, okay, let's just go character by character, figure out where the index is and let's turn that on. So we'll have some kind of bit mask like this. It'll start out as zeros. So here this C is the third character. So we will just go to the third character and and our current thing with a one over here. Actually, we will or it. So we will just or it over here. And that's basically how you do the mask, right? So you just you just or it with a character over here. And then when you or these together, this will give us this. And then if you want to turn on the A, A is at index zero. So you would just or it with this now. And then you would get this and so on. So that's how you build your bit mask. You just go character by character. And the way to figure out the actual index is very easy as well. So we can just get the ASCII value for the character minus the ASCII value for A, because A will be like zero, or sorry, if you look up an ASCII chart, A will have some number. And if you do the ASCII value for A, then that's how many that's how many characters that character is away from A. So if we want A to be over here, then if we do A minus A, we'll get zero. But if we do like B minus A, then we'll get one and so on. C minus A will give us two and so on. So then our arrays will be represented as bit masks here, right? These are all bit masks now instead of instead of a set or you could do a set if bit mask is kind of annoying for you either way. But then after that, because we only have 16 uh, things, the total number of combinations you're gonna have is two to the 16th because for each word, you can either take it or not take it, right? As of like your recursive tree. So this is small enough to just do back, backtracking. Two to the 16th is not so big. So we can just do a basic backtracking function. I don't know if I've done too many backtracking functions, but basically we'll just have a result variable. And then for the backtracking function, we will have two things. We will have an index and our current mask. So the index is where we are in the array, like where we're actually looking. So, and the, um, and the mask is like what, what letters we have used so far, right? They'll just be in a bit mask. And then for a, for the current thing we're on, so for current word we are on, we have two choices, take or not take. And this sounds like DP and it basically is. So you can definitely, instead of backtracking, you can code up a DP solution with these two things with a cache and that also will pass, but backtracking is gonna have a little bit better performance here. Because for DP, um, you're, you, you are gonna have a lot of masks that you need to store, and this is small enough to do backtracking, and the cache isn't gonna save us too much space. Because you actually aren't gonna have too many masks that are the same, given you only have like 15 or 16 words. So if you had a lot more words, then um, it's gonna be more efficient to use a mask. But with only 16, 
or sorry, it's going to be more efficient to do DP, but with 16, backtracking also works. And it's pretty, like the backtracking and the DP will be very similar, except backtracking will have no cash. So essentially, let's, let's break down these two choices. So let's say we don't take, and that's pretty easy. We just backtrack again to I plus one, and we pass our current mask, right? Because we didn't take any character, so our mask stays the same, we just go to the next index. If we do take, we have our current mask. So let's say, once again, if we go back up here, we have our current mask, and then we will have the bit mask for the word we're on stored, right? Because we will compare these, we will change these two bit masks. And then we just check, like, if these two things added together give us zero, that means there are no share, shared characters. So if these two things added together do give us zero, that means we can we can use this word as well. And if we can use the word, the way to combine these words is also really easy. That's why bitmask is going to be nice. You can just do an or operation on these two things. And so let's say our bitmask look like this, right, where there's nothing shared. Basically, what's going to happen is an or operation. If there's a one in any one of these, they will they will turn into ones. And that's kind of what we want, right? If any if any word has a any one of the characters, then we want to say we have that character. So these word would look like this. And then we just pass this mask down into the next call. So we can write that down. Do an or or do an and of current mask or our mask and current word. If this gives zero, then we can use the word get new mask and recurse. And then finally, our base case for the backtracking. So typically, the base case for the backtracking is basically just um, just when you're out of bounds. And so we can do that as well. So once we're out of bounds, like let's say we have our some kind of mask and we're over here. Then all we need to do is just check how many ones are in this mask, and that's how many characters we've used. So we just maximize that. So we can have some like result variable outside of our backtracking function. And as soon as we get to the end of any um, of any array, we can just check how many characters did we use and maximize there. And in Python, uh, you can build your own. It's also very easy. Like, like let's say you have something like this, and you want to count the number of ones. So you can build this on your own, where you basically just get the last bit check if it's zero or one, if it's one, add it to the result, and then you just keep deleting the last bit. So you keep doing this over and over and over and check the number of ones. But there's actually a Python built-in function called bit count, which we're gonna use, which basically does that under the hood. So you can take your mask, call bit count on it, and it will give you the number of ones, and that's how many letters we have used, and that will basically give you the, um, the total letters in the word that you've used. And that's basically it, so our backtracking function. So essentially we're saying, Okay, let's try to use the word recurse, then undo using the word, try not using the word, and then we keep recursing and so on. So it kind of looks similar to DP, maybe it kind of is, so maybe you can code it another way, but either way, that's what we're gonna do. Like I said, you can do this with a set. With set, it would look more like a traditional backtracking function because then you would kind of like say, okay, I have some letters I'm using for a, for a word I'm on, let's try to add those letters to the set, recurse, and let's delete them from the set and then go to the next word and so on. So that would look a little bit more like a traditional backtracking function if you coded it with a set, but we're gonna code it with a bit mask. And if anything, even, even if a set and a bit mask give you roughly the same time, um, I, I think it's good to learn a bit mask because it's gonna be very useful for harder problems. So you definitely wanna get like comfortable with using it. So even if you, like a set is gonna be roughly the same, um, I think you should definitely practice it because for other problems, like you won't be able to use a set. And if you use DP, you can't use a set, right? Because you need to pass in a bit mask as a state. Okay, so let's code up now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna write a function that will take a word and convert it into a bit mask. So it's gonna take a word. And we are gonna do a few optimizations that I didn't talk about. So it's actually possible for a word to have um, multiple characters that are the same. So I think something like this is actually allowed. And any word like this, we're just gonna exclude straight away because if a word has two characters that are the same, we can never use that word no matter what we have. And also it is possible for two words to be the same. I don't think they said they have to be unique. So if we have like un and un, then we don't wanna like use that again, right? So that's what we're gonna, uh, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna make sure we have unique bit masks and we're gonna make sure if the word has 
multiple of the same character, we won't include those. And that will speed up our, our program because our runtime is gonna be two to the 16. And so getting this number down does speed it up, does um, slow it or speed it up significantly, right? Because this is two to some power. So. so even getting rid of a few words like two to the 16, instead of two to the 16, we get two to the 13. That's gonna speed it up like 10 times. So yeah, so we're gonna handle that in this function. So we're gonna have, first we're gonna check, um, first we're gonna check if the word has duplicate characters and the way to do that really easily is just turn it into a set and compare it to the length of the word. So if we have like ABCD, this will give us a set of ABCD, which is length four, which is the same as the word. But if we have something like this, then this will give us a set of four, which is not the length of the word. So we have duplicate characters. So we'll check for that first. And if it um, is duplicate, we'll just return zero. And then wherever we call this function, we'll just say like, if that returns zero, we're not gonna use that. So if length set word doesn't equal length word, let's just return zero. Because that means the word has duplicate characters and we'll never use it. Now we'll have a result for the number of ones. And we simply have to go through all the characters in word. And so remember, um, A will be the rightmost thing. So all we have to do is just or our result with a, so there's a few ways to do this. Um, basically the the way to get the character is ord of the character minus a, that'll give us like the index of where we want to be. And now you can either do two to this power, or you could do a, a bit, um, or, and just cause we're practicing bit manipulation, we can just do a bit or, so we'll say result or equals, and this is going to be this. So this will give us a value of like how far we need to shift. And then basically what we need to do is we need to shift a one that many times to get there. So this will be one shifted right this many times. And quickly to show this, so let's say we have something like this. Let's say our word is just this. And let's say our character is B. So what we'll get is we'll get B minus A, which will just be one. So we're gonna take a one and we're gonna shift it this many times to the left. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna take this one and we're gonna shift it one time and then we will or these together. And that's gonna turn on this bit in our um, bit mask. So that's how we're gonna handle that. So this will work. Like I said, you can also add two to this power, which will also work because this is two to the one. So if you add two to the one, this will also work. Either one's fine. Okay. Um, finally, we return result. So this will give us, get, get, get a word, then give us a bit mask. Then we're going to make a set of bit masks because we want to make sure that if if two words have the same bit mask, we only use it once because we're never going to be able to use the same word twice. So now we basically need to loop through every word in array and call this get bit, get bit mask and convert it. So we can say for word in array mask equals get bit mask on the word. Then we just basically have to check if it's non-zero, right? So if this is non-zero. Because if it's zero, that means the word had multiple characters that are the same, so we don't really care about that. Okay, so now that we have a mask, we just have to make sure it's non zero, and if it's non zero, we will add it in. So we can just say, like, if mask, that means this has unique characters, so we'll add it to masks. So now masks will be a set of all our bit masks, and now we want to transform it into a list, so we can just say mask equals list of masks. Okay. And our result is gonna be like our biggest word possible. And now we can just do our backtrack function, which does look similarly to DP. So honestly, you could call this DP because like I said, we're not really adding in or moving. We're kind of just making a new mask. But I think it's still backtrack because you are kind of like trying one thing and if it fail, well, it doesn't really fail, but you are basically just brute forcing every combination here. So that's kind of like backtrack. And we don't have a cache, so also kind of like backtrack. Okay, so backtrack. We'll take an index and our current mask. So like I said, if the index is the length, so the thing we're gonna be looping through is our masks, which is the masks for each word. So once we ran out of masks, then we just need to check how many ones are in our current mask and we will maximize our result for that. So if index equals length of masks, that means we're done. So we wanna just update our result so we can say non-local result and we can say result equals max of result. And for our current mask, let's get the bit count, the number of ones, and that's how many letters we've used. And just returned here. 
So now for our backtrack function, we're gonna try two things. We're gonna try not using the word and then using the words. So for not using the word, that's always allowed. So we can just call backtrack on index plus one and our current mask. But now for using the word, we have to make sure that our current mask and the mask for the word, when you and those together, it has to be zero. Because if there's, if there's an overlapping character at any one of these, when you and them, that bit will be one, right? So for example, if I and these two together, let's say I'm anding these two together, because these are overlapping, that, will be, that bit will be one, which means this character is present in both of them. So if every character is unique to only one of them, that means anding them together will always be zero. So we can say if mask and masks index equals zero, then this is allowed. So we will backtrack to index plus one. And now we basically, so we want to use the characters from both masks. And the way to use the characters from both masks is you just or them. So that means that these ones, there won't be um, a one that's on for both of them at any, at any same index but there will be a bunch of ones that will be on for each one. So we just or them and that will turn on the characters for both of them. So we just call backtrack at index plus one and we or our current masks with this masks that we are currently on. Now we just have to call backtrack zero zero and return result. Like I said, this is very similar to DP. You can probably change like five lines of code and make this DP with a cache, but yeah. And if you don't want to use the mask, you can also just use a set. So the way a set would look like is you have your current set of letters. And you, if you don't want to use the word, you will pass on your current set. And if you do want to use the word, you just check, is are, are any of the letters in my word in the set of letters? If they're not, then take every single letter that's in my word, add it to the set of letters, backtrack. And then after that, get rid of the, um, um, clear, clear the set afterwards. So yeah, okay. You don't have to like do an undo operation because whenever we get a new mask, we just get a new integer. So there's like nothing to undo there. So we can run this. Okay. All right, so hopefully it's good. Yeah, so you see it's pretty good. Um, I Like I said, I don't know if using a set will actually be slower because technically compare bit masks is log like you are comparing character by character so maybe you can speed it up a bit if you loop like if you compare characters by index and break early but i mean that will still be worst case basically uh you'll still compare every single character but we did we, we don't have to like add and remove in all these things right we can just use a bit mask and just and bit masks so it's just like we're not using data structure so, so that will save us space because we're just using bit masks now instead of like a set of characters all the time. Okay, um, but either way, it's only gonna be 26 characters, it's not the worst. So let's go through the time and space here. So to turn every word into a bit mask, you're basically going through every single character in this array, which is not gonna be like too, it's not gonna be um, slow because you only have 16 uh, words and 26 characters. So really the, the main time is gonna be this, this backtrack function. This is gonna be the slow part. But like I said, because we can compare the masks. So let's just assume we can compare the masks in constant time, because like I said, there's only 26 characters. So assuming like this part is constant time, you basically have two to the N words. So this will be two to the N, where N is the number of words you have. Right, because for every word, you can either take it or not take it. So you have two to the n total possibilities. And space. So what did we make here? So we did make a set of bit masks. So that's just gonna be uh, O of n, basically, right? O of the number of words. Each word will just be transformed into an integer. So that's just gonna be n. Did we make anything else? I don't think so, right? So we did save, um, well, actually we're not necessarily saving. I mean, I guess if we did have like a set of, of characters, it would be a little bit bigger, but it wouldn't be that bad, right? It would only be like 26 characters. So realistically, you're not saving too much space. So yeah, like I said, I do, I don't know. I, I think the bit mask operations will be faster, but time complexity wise, it'll be about the same, but I would encourage you to try to do this this way, even if it's a little confusing, because like I said, use bit masks for harder problems. So definitely good to get into.
Um, but yeah, regardless, I think that's going to be all for this one. So if you did like this one, then please like the video and please subscribe to the channel. And yeah, if you have any questions about Bitmaster or anything like that, just uh, post in the comments. So thanks for watching.